All right, we're here tonight with some Mardu Pyromancer. Going to try something different tonight because I cannot play my beloved Death Shadow deck at the Grand Prix. So I'm trying this deck out. Um, I've been playing a little bit with it, and I decided to change a thing or two up. It's like Mardu Pyromancer is like one of those 52% against the field kind of decks. I don't really want to play that at a Grand Prix. So I just tried to skew the deck to be better against like what I think it's going to be. Like, like I think there's going to be more control. So I got Liliana's. Liliana's are also good against Ironworks. So I've got those in my main deck. In my sideboard, I've got more Planeswalkers like Last Hope to claw through those mid-range matchups. Uh, Leyland of the Voids to fight... The graveyard decks and ironworks, then just you know, the, just a lot of heavy hitters. Like I, I cut a lot of the cards that aren't super powerful. Maybe with the exception of this dark blast. This might be just too cute, but I like this and it's cool with uh, young pyromancer. So I don't know if this we're in the market for that, but I just kind of wanted more cards that are just heavy hitters, and I decided to just cut some of the cards that like. Like the cam balls that are, are good against probably a majority of the field, but I just want to make the deck a little better against you know the top decks I think I'm gonna play. So we're gonna jump into a league here. Play a little bit of Pyromancer tonight. Can I play my beloved my beloved Death Shadow deck at this Grand Prix? Because it just takes too many cards, which is the struggle. I'm either going to play this deck or I'm going to play Ironworks. The issue with playing Ironworks is it's just like like really hard to practice on Moto. And because um, like you just time out all the time and you don't get to play a lot of magic, which makes things a little, a little tough. Um, but I think this deck is very, very good. I've been playing it, and when I don't fumble through it, or if I just, as soon as I realize I have a loop, then I tend to just, you know, ask my opponent to concede, and if they don't, then I just scoop because I want to play another game. Like, I, I think I've played this in, like, three or four leagues, just go 0-5, because I either time out or it's just not worth my time to click through the combo, which is, like, a moto thing. Okay, so this hand's all right. We're going to keep this. It's nice that we're on the draw so that we can fade the looting with some and know what's going on. All right, so we're playing against Hardened Scales. So I think we just want to keep the board clean, especially this modular thing. So we're not going to looting on one. We're probably just going to push this. How's it going, uh, Login? Logging Kong. I'm just going to do this now. My opponent wants to take the time to animate this to put it on this, and that's their entire turn. That's okay. I just also want to use my mana. Okay. We have a Dread Boar for my opponent's next play. Yeah. The next turn will probably. Hopefully, we hit a land. We can just go Pyromancer into looting. When are you gonna stream against Shadow? Probably next week, more than likely. I just I can't play Shadow at the Grand Prix, so. Alright, so now we're in a little bit of trouble. Now I might just looting. Alright, well. That was a lucky draw. So we're gonna loot. Probably ditch this and this. Bolt this. Play a land and pass. And then next turn we can play Bedlam Rebeller. I'll likely play it next week. Just haven't had a like work's been intense the last couple of, couple of weeks, so I have not been streaming as much. Yeah, since my wife got back, work's just been ramped up a little bit. Do you play Shadow because you think it's good or because you like the deck? I think it's a little bit of both. Like, it's a good deck, but it is also, like, you know, not humans or it's not, 
God, this is like my opponents are keeping on coming. I gotta find an answer to that. Um, this game's going to spiral out of control quickly. Um, like it's not. I think it's good, but it, it's not. It's not humans, or you know, it's not one of those powerhouse decks. So I'm gonna try to find an answer to this hangerback walker, probably. Okay, so that's gonna get something. It's a pretty mopey Liliana, but. It's going to either trade for the front half of this Hangerback Walker or the Steel Overseer. And, like, either one is fine because if the Hangerback Walker lives, it's going to get annoying. If the Steel Overseer lives, it's going to get annoying. So he's probably just going to sack his Hangerback Walker. If I had to assume. Then we're going to Bedlam Reveler for, for zero, for two, and then hopefully hit something decent off of it. We're definitely in some trouble. Hopefully they just fire up Blink Moth and Ink Moth. And then get in. It's not great for the home team, but it is. At least they're not adding to the board. Ooh, they hit a hardened scales. That's just like. That's brutal. So this is now three. Three points a piece. So now we have to like bend the regular into just like something to deal with this and whatever else my opponent has going on. They should just not attack the Liliana. At least I don't think they should. Yeah. So if I want to, if I want to use this Liliana, I can do that. Do you have a lingering souls in my graveyard? No, I don't. Okay. I might as well do this now. Because I might want to keep one of the cards that I get. So we'll ditch this. Because I'm going to discard it anyways. Red, red. Ugh. This thing's a 3 3. Yeah, that's just game over. Like, I'm not going to beat that as well. Let's I thought we had a pretty good draw there, and it still just like didn't really matter. Which is frustrating, but that is just how it is sometimes. So against this deck, I want Engineered Explosives, Wear Tear, Leyline of the Void. I don't want Liliana the Veil. I don't want Collective Brutality. Uh, Young Pyromancer is not great because they have Hangerback Walker. But I want to keep some number of threats in. Lingering Souls is also not great for a similar reason. It's just kind of like I have to just grind them out and win with one threat, which is kind of tough. I could bring in these Ensnaring Bridges and then just try to keep Hellbent, but then they're just going to like find a whatever it is, find a, ha a walking blister. I could bring in some more removal. I probably don't need all of this discard because they're going to come help out pretty quickly. This is good if they don't have a Ravager. But if they start, or not a Ravager, or a Steel Overseer, but they start doing that and things get pretty hairy. Which is the same thing for Last Hope. I could see just shaving and then just playing two bridges. Let's try this. This ley line of the void in play. Then we can looting on one just to look for a land. 
This is big because it shuts off Hangerback Walker. It shuts off the modular abilities as well. So, oh god. I really want this, but this might be just like over. It's because it's so much mana away. I'll turn I can just ditch both of these. It doesn't really do anything when it comes to casting the Bedlam Reveler, though. But the Dreadboards will have targets. Why don't we just do these? And just like keep enough removal spells to hopefully get us to the promised land. It's nice how this shuts off probably like one half of their deck, but it doesn't do much against the other half, which can be kind of annoying. Land, nope. I mean, we, we play a low land count, we kept one land, so that's apt to happen from time to time. But nice to have been a blood crit, because we could have at least thought seize them. But. We are looking for a little bit of help here. If we get a second land drop, we're going to be fine. Because we're just going to like coast to this Bedlam Reveler. But we need it probably like right now. No, nope, we didn't hit it. Not a tough way to start out tonight. At least I don't have anything else on the board. Animation module. Whatever, one or more. Plus one, plus one, plus one. You can make that. Okay. So it's just like another generic go wide thing. Nice. So let's just start dealing with these. Black, red. Get this out of here. They're going to put the counter on it. But if we hit another land drop, we can go push plus discard spell, which is going to get us even closer to the Bedlam Reveler, which is nice. <coughs> Should I sell my Sacred Foundries at Buy This Place? Yeah, I don't I don't know a lot about buying and selling cards there. Login or logging Kong. Like I tend to just buy the cards when I need them and not super worry about it just because like if I'm gonna play with them, I need them, you know. It is nice that we just turn this Arcbound Ravager and do basically a one for one. Like that like it's not gonna get any larger. The animation module is a real problem, though. Like how they're just slowly going to go wider and wider on us. They might not know how this works. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's a cool little interaction there. Alright, let's just deal with this. That E for zero might be nice because it'll get rid of this than any other tokens. And if they go to like sack a bunch of things, then that's not that's not super gonna work out. So I've got how many? One I, I should have just dreadboard that. That was stupid. To just use my mana efficiently. That was just dumb. Because now if I draw a land, I could have gone like blow up EE, push something. And now I can't do that. Push is also just like an instant, so that was dumb. Hanger back walker, okay. This makes me wonder about because, like, there are draws where, like, Last Hope obviously is very good, like, here it just picks everything off. Now I just kind of want to play this for zero and pop it because I hit. I'm just logging a whole bunch of stuff. It's like none of these triggers. It's just like a 42 for one. And get the opal. Okay. All right. So here's the nature's claim. So they're going to get a 1-1 one, one out of it. 
It's good on him to see that coming. It's good sideboarding from our opponent. Now we just need a land to get this animation module out, and we should be okay. Oh, the welding jar is going to make that a little bit harder. Another hanger back walker. All right, let's just do this now. Because we can't. One, two, three, four. We just got to keep casting spells. They'll save this with the welding jar, I would assume. <clears throat> yeah. It just, it's going to like, it's so much like card equity. Okay. So this hanger back walker gets much bigger. We're gonna need probably one more engineered explosives, or we're gonna have to hit some lingering souls, which I did board somehow. Let me see if I can sideboard it out. I did side out two. Hey, Mr. Tacos, how you doing? It's been a minute since I've seen you, but I haven't been streaming as well. I've been busy with work and such. Yeah, I've been busy. What is this? Whenever... They just put a counter on this without even... Huh. I mean, that's a pipe dream waiting to happen. We're just going to deal with this now. Do you live in East Eastern Time? Yeah, it's like... I don't know. What time is it? It's... 10 o'clock where I live, p.m. We're probably just dead as a doorknob here. The nice thing is I don't think that we're going to see a lot of this deck at the Grand Prix because it takes a lot of cards. So, like, I'm not super bummed out losing to this deck. But this is Animation Module. That's the hard part of this deck. It, it does, like, a bunch of different things pretty well. Like... I'm not even drawing to. Yeah, I'm just not even drawing to anything. It does like it goes very wide, but it also goes tall. And then, like it has different angles, like with hanger back walker. It can grind with walking bust, it can just like mow things down. I would assume it's very good against humans. But no, we took a beating there. The big thing I have to sit down with this deck is like I have to make up my plans, which will probably affect how I sideboard is built. Because like the hardest part about playing these, like all these mid-range decks, I think are much easier to play after playing Death Shadow. Because like you just have more to think about. This is just playing that with less going on. But I need to make sure I have cohesive plans set up and understand like how am I sideboarding everywhere, what cards are coming in, what cards are coming out. So that's that's the hard part about to figure out with this. <clears throat> Probably can't keep this. We don't have a looting. We know we're on the draw. I'm probably mulligan too, which is nice. We probably have to keep this one. I might want to play another land if I keep this strategy, which I should pay attention to. I, just, I have added, I do have more threes, so 21 lands might be good. Could cut like a collective brutality. Are we playing a mirror? Yeah, it looks like it. I would assume this mirror boils down to like who draws more lingering, more lingering souls and bedlam revelers. This Lily of the Veil is going to be pretty solid, I think. Like, it, it's usually not very good in, in lingering souls battles, but like. If you have a Lingering Souls and your opponent has a Lingering Souls, it's not bad. So what? They probably kept up a removal spell here. So let's just go get a Blood Crypt. 
Inquisition our opponent. Hold this to fetch Swamp. Yeah, we're just gonna take take the two for. It's interesting. They played. They didn't. They held up Fatal Push instead of casting their Lingering Souls. All right. We really want. Yeah, you got it. She's gonna take my Bedlam Revler probably. So we hit a land drop here. We'll probably win this game going away, if I had to guess. If we don't hit a land drop here, things can get a little hairy. You probably should just take Bedlam Revler. Yeah. Not gonna fetch. So I probably want to just set up with Lingering Souls before I play this Liliana. Sacred Foundry. Especially considering, like, I don't really want to discard any of my cards. I mean, like, the Dreadboard, maybe. I would like to just keep as many copies of Lingering Souls in my deck as possible. There's a Bloodstained Mire. What is this? They hit a command. They hit a K command, so pretty easy discard. Like, we're just going to hit... Okay, they're in flashback looting, which means they should have left their land in their hand. Do you play events at your LGS or just big ones? Yeah, usually just, like, PTQs and things like that. Like, that's just usually what I'll do if I'm going to, like, an LGS. Um... I do think I kind of want to start working this. And I can easily, I can probably just discard this Inquisition. Because we're both going to be Hellbent here. Like if we both are having a Lingering Souls off and I have a Planeswalker and we're in good shape. I sometimes go to play at LGS events when I want to hang out with my friends though. Like if I want to go get like a beer after uh, playing, I'll go to an LGS. All right, so he has Red Boar. Okay. Probably takes my Red Boar. So now it's just like, who souls harder? Which I'm on pace to soul harder, but... So now we're just going to start shipping in. I did trade an Inquisition for a Fatal Push, which, you know, I don't know how good that actually is in these mirrors. Because, like, the removal spells don't seem great anyways. And I'm probably not going to trade... Like, if my opponent doesn't block and attacks next turn, I'm likely just going to... Yeah, they're just going to try to keep the board clear. That could mean they have, like, a Liliana Last Hope in their deck, or they're just hoping to, like, hit Bedlam Revelers. Just going to be mana efficient. If we hit a land next turn, we can go double flashback, which will be great. Not bad. So I had to think about what this card could be. And it's likely either a land or a removal spell. Because if it was a Bedlam Reveler, they would have played it. And if it was like a young Pyromancer, they would have played it. So I'm not going to Inquisition until I have like a Pyromancer to force through. Until then, I'm probably just going to chill out. If they can't command me, I'll discard this Inquisition. You got the Bedlam Reveler probably. We're going to bolt our opponent. I get my discard spell.
flash this back, leave this in our hand. And we do have a lethal attack next turn. My opponent hit a Lingering Souls, and they're just going to play it and flash it back, and we're going to... Then it's like a race. We're going to take five, go to nine. So if they have their own souls here, we're not in like super great shape. You just discard two copies of souls here, and it would be pretty good. But they only have two cards. Oh, no, they were like waiting for some reason. So just ditch two copies of Thoughtseize. And they use their white source, which is odd. Okay. Slugfest. Okay, so they're going to gain drain a little bit. So, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, got it. Crack you. And then bolt you. So, I'm assuming all of our spot removal is not great. I'm going to assume that a lot of the inquisitions aren't great either. I would assume that the um the whatever they are are pretty good the thought seizes so like cards i'm interested in this right here this right here i'm interested in like these nine maybe the where these if i see ley line but i'm not interested in these on the draw the inquisitions can probably go as well as the fatal pushes and maybe like a collective brutality keep all the grindy elements but brutality is like a better spot roll to spell than push lightning bolt might not be great either yeah brutality is probably better than lightning bolt as it can help swing a race like each of them are bad removal spells but one's also a duress um i could just hedge and bring these in because like these lightning bolts aren't very good Maybe like the discard spells are better than the removal spells. I'm not exactly sure about that. Could just go with these are bad and then like hedge and bring these in. Knowing that I can discard them. This can get real grindy. I like the Chandra. Against Lingering Souls decks, though, if Chandra does live, it's really good. I guess I only want these wear and tears if I see ley lines. So, like, maybe it's a little too, too much to do that. I just don't think the spot removal is that good. Like, the discard is probably better than the spot removal because you can hit Bedlam Revelers, Planeswalkers, and K Commands. We still have two. We have five ways to kill. We have six ways to kill Pyromancer on two. Yeah, we're going to go like this. Sorry, Caps. How you doing, Drago? Um, I actually don't think this hand's very good. I've only got one land. I think I want to go to 21 lands. Especially if I play more three drops. Yeah, I think I'm going to mulligan. Yeah, we'll keep this one. Put that on top. Just a spell that can hit a Pyromancer. Oh, nice. Messed up our fetch lands, but they likely just don't have Blood Moon anyways. Oh. They have Tormod's Crypt, Cambal, Collective Brutality, 
polarized here and this Campbell's kind of got body me because this brutality takes this Bedlam River is really far off I think I'm just gonna take this Campbell hey Schultz cute how you doing yes yeah, Campbell's probably gonna get, get me Hopefully I can find an answer to the Bedlam Reveler before it becomes a huge problem. I mean, they have a Colgon's Command, which brings it back, which is kind of annoying. But at least we have, like, the grind, the top grindy card, which is this. That's a pretty solid draw. But it just, it's just going to get... They would have had to hit a land drop. But if they do hit a land drop, it's really bad. But we can just rebuy it with Liliana. So we're just going to run this out here. Trade for Syracuse and Baltimore. Congrats on the classic. Yeah, thanks, man. It was a fun tournament. I'm great. Just ask you. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. And you did well in the uh, did well in the SCG. Uh, so they're going to get commanded here. We're probably just going to ditch our Lily Lingering Souls. At least they didn't. They did. They return their. No, they didn't return their Campbell. Okay. Three with the Baltimore. I don't know when the event is. Drago. This gets Blood Crypt. We're just gonna go up. We know our opponent has a Bedlam Reveler. That is going to be the only five mana four. Oh, I'm not going to Philly. Yeah, that's uh, that's the weekend of my anniversary, so I am I am not going to make that one. So we do get to gnaw through these lingering souls, which is gas, and we're just going to cast this. Because this, even at this point in the game, this should have some decent text message text on it. It's not great, but. <clears throat> yeah, Johnny and I were playing next weekend in Detroit, but so what are they gonna do? They they can revler here one two three. They can't even bend the revler, and if they take this lingering souls out, then it takes them even another turn off. I would love to draw a discard spell. All right, well. They're gonna reveler first, which isn't great. Who's who's your third? Tom, yeah. I think we're gonna play. I'm either gonna play this deck or Ironworks. Uh, Johnny's gonna play Blue White, and then Tom's gonna play Humans or Impact. Really ditching. Oh, they hit an Agros. Oh man, we did we did get a Lingering Souls, which is good. Hit one here would be nice. That sucks. Pick up on that. Probably not going to block this thing. Humans, Martyr, and Blue Light seems like a great lineup. Do you own both decks or do you borrow decks from someone? I own my Death Shadow deck, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so they're just going to get rid of this. So they saw this coming, which is worth knowing for future future games. This Bedlam Revel is just going to get into it. Like, we need to draw a spell next turn. Because I, I don't think I can get away with blocking this. Because they're just going to flashback this Lingering Souls. And I really don't want to block this thing. We just said Young Pyromancer. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, well, we're not going to have to worry about blocking it. Now we're in trouble. We're just going to take this. Our best draw would be like Lingering Souls. Uh, just my friends. Yeah, like one of my teammates plays it. That's a asking you shall receive. Always yield. That's one of the like hard parts about like I like obviously these like thought sees mirrors are skill intensive, but like 
oftentimes it just comes down to like who top decks the card that's best in the mirror, which is like Lingering Souls or Bedlam Reveler or Snapcaster Mage, who hits those the most? Twin Humans, try. Sometimes because it's better than Kataki. I don't think Hardened Scales is going to see a lot of play, Drago. Like, I was thinking about it, and Hardened Scales takes, like, Ancient Stirrings, Mox Opal, um, Horizon Canopy, and, um, like, Nature's Claim, which is kind of important. Humans, Mardu, and Blue Eye. Yeah. I'm trying this Mardu, because, like, Mardu's, like, 52% against the field, and at the, like, uh, that cam ball is going to kind of grind me out. I'm just going to cast it too. This is going to get tough. Because I probably have to chump. And I probably do have to cast a Lingering Souls. Which is just going to be negligent when it comes to life. That's not bad. I can't even, I'm not even close to casting it though. So just... Have exiled all my cards because this Tormod's crap got me. All right, well we're going to. I think I have to serve. I can put him to twelve. I can threaten some blocks. Like I have to chump this, probably triple block this. At least they're hell bent. So like while we are ahead on board, we do need to draw something here. <clears throat> I think hard scales see lots of play. This is good. I don't think you can like I don't think people are gonna play decks that are like you know significantly worse like straight worse options if they can play away. Like they're not gonna dilute their decks. Like we were gonna play like we were thinking about playing Infect and Boggles, but the problem is they both play Dryad Arbor, and like they each can probably play without Dryad Arbor, but why not just play different decks that aren't damaged, you know? Yeah, that's that was tough. I've literally, I'm like, oh, The PTQ system is just, like, also very frustrating. All right, we're going to chump block this thing. I don't really know what I can hit here. I need to kill this. Block. Swing for four. They trade two. We get in for two. Chump here. Go to four. If they don't block, chump here. Then I'm basically like locked. So I guess I'm going to attack with three. I agree. I lost the top eight. Yeah. It's just, it's just tough. Okay. So now we're not going to block this. We are going to chump this though. I'm just trying to like make something happen here. All right, yeah, we're block this. I did not think I was gonna lose this game, how it lined up in the beginning, but nug the yeah, we're just we're drawing we're drawing dead here. I think and they they don't have linger souls in the graveyard, but like this thing's just gonna give some inevitability. You know what's dumb about it is that if you do well in a PTQ, then like, if you do well in these PTQs, it incentivizes you like not to play Magic, like, which is kind of dumb, I think. Like, I don't know. So they, we saw that they did respect Leyline of the Void. I think Leyline of the Void's probably still too good to not have in the deck. On the play, I want to like get rid of a little more discard, and I actually want to bring these in on the play when I can get like a I can edict a creature on two. Lots of people weren't there. A lot of people have moved. I could bring in like a like a couple more removal spells, probably like these collective brutalities. Like if they have, if cam ball is a card we have to worry about, then like these brutalities probably aren't great. Engineering Explosive is like only a card that's good if you're behind. So maybe I don't want... I have no idea how to board in this mirror. Engineering Explosive also can kill a Planeswalker, though. I just don't have any idea how to, like, do this. We can kill Camball a couple different ways. I 
Well, doesn't this card get better on the play? Don't all my, like, if I'm going to play, like, you know, permanents, aren't all my permanents better on the play? To just, like, turtle up behind a, like, I just want to, like, Lingering Souls, then, like, create something that gives me a spell's worth of advantage every turn. I want to play 21 lands. I think in my next version I'm going to play, I'm going to cut like one card and add a 21st land. Because I do, I do think that the threes are very good against what I think we're going to play against. I don't think, I think it's bad against souls if you don't have your own souls, Joey. And on the play it can eat a pyromancer. Like, I actually, like, back when Jundas Shadow was, like, the best deck for a little while there, I actually liked Liliana even after sideboard, even if my opponent had, like, Green Souls. Because you just got into these, like, board stalls. Like, I, I didn't have it when I was on the draw. But you can still, like, go down, eat their two drop, and then you just get into these board stalls where the edict matters in the board stall as well because you're just gaining an incremental amount of advantage. I'm going to keep this. <clears throat> this hand's not great, but like it's seven cards, which is what you need to keep. You especially don't like mulliganing with Fates of Sluting is also punishing. Okay, so this probably takes. It probably doesn't take this because they know it's here. It takes that, yeah. Alright, what do you got? Take your Dread War. Spell Bomb is annoying. What I also like about Liliana is it's like a very good threat that doesn't use the graveyard. So we're going to ditch this Marsh Flats. I could have, probably could have Fetch Shock there, but we drew another land. But I'm likely discarding that land to this next turn. I would be willing to bet that I'm going to end up trading this Liliana for uh, Engineer Explosives and a Pyromancer. Like a Liliana activation is going to trade for Pyromancer like right here plus a Liliana activation is how I'm going to deal with this. If this is a discard spell, that's pretty bad. It's a bolt. Okay, that could be worse. Now we need we need like a creature of our own here. That's pretty solid. So let's go up. Let's ditch our land. Tormod's Crypt is an odd one. Like, I think you just play Spellbomb. And then we have like the power couple, the girls. That seems weird to me. Let's see if I got Fork Bolt. I don't know. I think you'd want to go here, keep this one under control. I'm going to hold this Engineer Explosives for as long as I can. Hey, how's it going, Cody? Oh, that's cool. Combo deck. They did your push. We're going to go up with our Liliana, but... How do I lose? I don't even really know how I lose from here. It's probably a bunch of Bedlam Revelers, but I'm, I'm, I'm even going to get around that. 
This K command's not doing anything. I think the engineered explosives is still better than the K command. This is going for sure. Yes. Yep, you're right there. I shouldn't have, I just should have plussed it and passed. That would have been a better play. Because, like, I still want this. The only other, the only, there's not even really a perk to it. Like, I could have milled a creature, rolled this back next turn probably, but not even this turn. I kind of want to keep the K command, actually, because, like, so how do they get back into this? They find a way to deal with this, probably. And that, and the ways they had to deal with this are like lingering, uh, not lingering souls, engineered explosives of their own. So I think I'm going to keep the command. Which, like, I still think it was wrong for me to cycle this. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, Jay Huey. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's, I've been busy. I've not been streaming for a while. Oh, wait, it's my turn here. Turn off auto yields. All right, so I enabled their Lingering Souls. So I, I should think on their draw step, because, like, again, what punishes me? Like, Young Pyromancer is annoying. Basically, the only thing that does anything to me is, like, Lightning Bolt, I think. They could be playing, like, Fork Bolt. But I guess we're not even going to K Command. Yeah, I would, I, they didn't have white at the moment. Yes. So, like, EE for three isn't even a real option. Target player discards a card, cold on some enemies to their own same target. All right, well, we'll just shoot you, and we'll make you discard a card. Yes. I'm so glad they fixed this rule. <clears throat> Thank you all for the bits. You've been bringing in. I appreciate it. Do I even want to plus this? I probably just want to hold this. I guess we had two planeswalkers just marching up. It's okay. Like, what are they going to do? They're going to Bedlam Reveler. I guess Bedlam Reveler into um, Lingering Souls is kind of annoying. But that doesn't really do it now. Bedlam they have to go like Bedlam Reveler into Red Source Bolt, I think. Or just draw Bolt to get out of this. That's why I don't think I think I would want to build this deck to be like much more much more slanted. Like I don't really want some of the cute cards. Like obviously my Dark Blast is cute. I probably won't end up playing this. I think it's cool with Pyromancer and like the dread like you know Bedlam Reveler and Lingering Souls. But I want to play the deck to be like slanted against humans with these. Another fatal push, some last hopes. Um, good against the blue-white control deck, which I th this has been the card that's done the most heavy lifting I've seen against blue-white control. Um, and then I think that, like, Ironworks, this card's good against Ironworks. You know, like, like Ironworks just cantrips, and it's, it's, a, it's a critical mass deck. This card doesn't matter when it's going off, obviously, because it's a sorcery speed card. But then I've got my Ley Lines here for Ironworks. Like, I think how I'm going to do this is I'm going to play something close to this that, like, punts... I'm just not even going to worry about Tron. Yeah, I just don't even think I'm going to beat Tron anyways. And, like, it, 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 you can use it as kind of a harassment piece. Like, you can use it as a piece of disruption. But it's not, like, unless you have an actual clock, Blood Moon's not going to do anything on its own. Heater. This is a really fast Reveler. If we find one. Because we're, like, we're probably ditching spells. This is a hand where likely all three of these removal spells, if all three removal spells are live here, then like, I mean, good shape.
What do we got? Okay, so we're playing against Storm. All right, so we're just going to take a gifts, and we're going to dig to find a way to another to deal with another gifts. Not all of our removal spells are going to be live. That's not good. Probably just hit both of these. Ugh. Probably can actually just get rid of this dread boar. This dread boar is not going to do anything. We've already got like one of them covered. We might be able. There might come to a world where we need both the front and back half of lingering souls to win this game. I think I'm going to add another land. I cut a collective brutality. Move a collective brutality to the sideboard. So I drew that, which is worth knowing gas. Um, what am I doing? Let me just go. We're going to be patient. There's only 20. I'm on 20 of them. That's just what I I saw like a I saw a lot of lists play between 19 and 21, so I just split it. I think I think because I want to play more three drops, I think I want 21. I mean, if you're a very bad trial, what's my leather and it doesn't help much. I think that's what he he's saying. I've only shown some good discipline holding back this brawl. All right, so I think it's. It's time to fire up the engine and get our clock on. Yeah, I think I want to play 21, especially if I play Veils. I don't play like Manamorphos or anything like that. All right. These are definitely getting in. My opponent is like slowly getting enough critical mass to just kill me like without. Like they're drawing spells. They must have cast this opt. I think I want to go like this. This is my way to fetch white, but I don't really want to go fetch shock because then it'll make might make that easier to get me with like a mini grape shot. But I mean grape shot's gonna wipe my board anyways. I probably should have ditched Fatal Push in all reality, because like I just don't think I need that many removal spells. I'm a little suspect of Blood Moon. Like I think it's gonna get you some like you're gonna you're obviously gonna like that's not bad. Um well I'm definitely attacking. You're gonna get some free percentages from Blood Moon being in your deck, like you're just going to win some games. But it also, um, you're going to win games because of Blood Moon. But like, it's also like not very proactive. Hey Tannen, how are you doing tonight? It's not very proactive, which this deck's not proactive anyways. I think I'm going to build it to especially not be proactive. I guess I just ditch both of these. This means I can bolt my opponent's face at some point. If we gotta really put the pedal to the metal. Alright, we're gonna get the one that draws cards. <coughs> I am likely gonna bolt my opponent at the end of the turn here. Oh, that's not it's not good. Oh, I'm not doing anything. So, like, now you decide to run it out. So let's flash this back. Okay. I think we're still going to ditch both of our lands, keep, a, keep the Lightning Bolt, then play the Pyromancer next turn. Let's see who's crushing. It is college football season. I watch a little bit of football. I had some friends in school that were really big Ohio State fans. So, oh, geez. 
So what do we got here? We have four, six. I don't even think I'm going to cast this. I could cast it and look for a discard spell. Or I could just play Pyromancer and pass. They have enough mana where if they have a Gifts, a Gifts probably kills me because we know they have all these rituals. There would be three out of their four gifts. So, like, Gifts goes and gets Piff, Grape Shot, Manamorphose, probably Noxious Revival. I'm not beating that. I think we're just going to play the Pyromancer. Because, like, the only way I'm going to beat this deck, are if they if they have what they need, the only way I'm going to beat it is on the stack, I think. Unless they drew Grape Shot. And they just, like, only had... But then they would wipe my board. But for them to wipe my board, they're going to use all their stuff anyways. I think we're just going to play the Pyromancer and pass. Go Buckeyes. Yeah, I used to watch Ohio State a lot. Even though I think Urban, the Urban Meyer situation is crap, in my opinion. Alright, so there's a bear. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> I think we're just going to let them storm off here because unless they find, like, I'm going to respond to this with a way to draw cards because they're just going to go, like, like, man is not an issue. They're just going to, like, power through whatever I do, and there's no sense giving them another storm. Give me one second. Oh, yeah. I mean, Ohio State will probably still win, but you can still acknowledge that something wrong was done, you know, and something that was wrong was done, you know. Um, so if their last card's Grape Shot, then they just wrath my board. I bolt this, get another token. I don't add to their storm. So I think we're just going to let this go. If they show me a way to draw cards, like the storm doesn't matter unless they have past in flames. I didn't think about past in flames. Yeah, I just didn't even think about past in flames. I like it, it doesn't matter at this point. We yeah, might as well now if it is past in flames. But they only have a little bit of blue mana, but they can find their gifts. Yeah, I messed this all up because I didn't even think about Past and Flames. Yeah, this was dumb. Past Flames just went right over my head. Okay, Remand. Sleight of Hand. So the last card was Remand. They were trying to bait a removal spell. Huh. I guess they can remand their own thing if they need to, if they're that worried about it. Okay, so against Storm, I want my Ley Lines and Engineered Explosives. <clears throat> I actually like shaving on some removal because they cut some bears. And like Lingering Souls is a little slow, but I do need a clock. I think Collective Brutality is a little... We can get rid of this one. Because, yeah, I've still got four, five... I have five ways to kill Brawl, and I still have eight discard spells. So, yeah, let's go like this. I just don't want to get caught with too much removal. We'll be right back. I'm going to get some more tea water.
push better than breadboard. Yes, 100%. 100%. Didn't even think about that. When he doesn't have any planeswalkers. His hand's pretty sweet. Yep, you were right there, Logan Kong. <clears throat> if you're still here, I saw your uh, one of your teammates, Tan, and Ross won the uh, the what, the PTQ. That's pretty sweet. Back on the Pro Tour. So don't have a way to answer this brawl. So I'm going to take this brawl, and then I'm going to take the pieces, and like we're not going to let them gain a whole bunch of velocity here. Yeah, so I'm either going to play this deck or Ironworks in Detroit. I can't play Death Shadow. It takes too many cards, unfortunately. All right, let's just take this pieces. KCI is awful, but it is very good. Like... After playing it like a, for a couple days, oh, they still have an opt. It's probably the best deck in the format with a capable pilot behind it. It's just I don't know if I will be a capable a capable pilot by then or not. What's hard is also is that I can't. All right, E's nice. All right, we're just going to do this. So they're all going to get grape shot of the way, but <clears throat> that's a grape shot. It's not going for my head, at least. This is definitely more your play style. Yes. This is just a mopey deck, though. Like, it, it's nothing special, you know? Like, it is still a, just a slow mid-range deck. All right, we're getting, we're getting Goblin. We're getting Goblin. That's kind of sweet. We're just going to, like, Grape Shot Remand. No. You're just... You got to have a Remand here, right? Wow, that's wild. You have another Grape Shot? Or you have uh, Empty the Wands? Okay. All right, well, that's sweet. Just getting in there. I might just get the concession. Just get the good night, Irene. It appears my opponent's moving to the scoop phase. Nice. Yeah, so I definitely... Like, I definitely want to play this deck with a slant. Because, like... I don't know. I want... I believe that I'm going to play against... I've been chatting with... Chat with your your buddy Joey. Um, and I, I definitely agree with him that like the decks that are going to be overrepresented are like humans, Hollow One, Mardu, Tron, KCI, and Blue White. And like, you know, I want to do well at this Grand Prix, and I, I think that I can handle people in day one of a Grand Prix. I can play a deck that's you know, not. And I think all my teammates are good, so maybe we can slant our decks, get those bad matchups, and still win. If I want to actually do well in the Grand Prix, then I can't play a deck that's 52% against the format. I've got to slant it somehow. Like, because if I'm 52% of the format of a Grand Prix on day one, then I'm probably like 45% or like 48% on day two. So I'm just not, not as good as, I'm probably like equal to or not as good as the rest of the people that are in there. Uh, what do we got here? All right, we're going to take this Utopia Sprawl. Because we can deal with this other stuff. No, like not currently, but it's easier to deal with than Utopia Sprawl is. What do you mean by slant? Like, like overcompensate. Like, not overcompensate. That might be the wrong word again. But um, oh, that would have been nice to have a land for, because we'd have hit the lightning bolt too. Um, to make the deck better against what I perceive we're going to play against. God.
this is likely going to be too slow, and probably one of these is going to be too slow. <clears throat> so you're saying that we talked about the podcast true? <laughs> yes, it is. It is absolute lunacy. Are you going to play? You going to play a land? You're probably going to play a stopping ground. We only need blood moon. That would suck. Okay, come on. Need a land. There we go. All right. So we don't need the second pyromancer. We don't need this. We're going to fetch a swamp so that if we do get mooned, we can at least play magic. Or maybe we're just gonna like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, dude, we're, we're just going to get a Blood Crypt, and we're going to cast our Bedlam Reveler. All right, they could just also have Stone Nothing. They have a Casting Wolf Run, so that's not actual nothing. Why would you do it like this? Like now you just missed out on damage. I just don't, don't understand it. All right, I think I'm still gonna cast this Bedlam Reveler. So I could K. I could like brutality this, discarding Pyromancer. Hit this, go to 13, they attack with this, turn it on, pump for 2, or I can just look at a bunch of new cards. We're going to talk back about Detroit, I'm going to push driving out and picking them up on the... <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Ben costs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, costs 2. So command's not going to do anything. I think I'm just going to cast it. I want to hit some land drops. Like this checks this. I take not too much damage in the air. Well, I did hit land drops. Just cast it. <coughs> yeah. Didn't even think about that. I, did they play that Wooded Foothills? Maybe I X'd out of it. That might have just been a case of me not paying attention there. No, that makes sense. They have Tireless Tracker in their so in their main deck. That makes a lot of sense. So is it time to wolf run the bird? I also have to not be like super willy nilly with my spells because having spells in your hand matters when you cast Faith of Sleeping because it just makes makes it easier, it makes it more selection. All right, I am blocking. I think. I think. Looks like their whole turn into this at least. So they're gonna crack me for two, it looks like. <coughs> okay. So there's their stomping ground. Surprised they didn't trade. I would have traded two for one there. What does this do? This just trades with a creature, maybe fogs for a turn. I'm gonna just play this because it impacts the board. Like it's it's gonna get something which makes their wolf run a little worse. Maybe they attack me. Yeah, dude, it's land destructionless Ponza. Wow, them sacking the bird was actually kind of nice. Well, I guess it's not that nice because. <sighs> hmm. 
It doesn't matter that much, actually. So this is nice. I guess it doesn't really fog, so I just hit this. So they're going to go wolf run for two. I go to three. It's because they wolf run. Oh, wow. They, oh, they must have something to do over there. Man. The Blood Moon. All right. Deal. That, I'll actually take that Blood Moon. It shuts off their Kessig Wolf Run, which is my biggest problem at the moment. Okay. So next turn, we're going to flashback looting to get a way around to find our swamp. we got two swamps. We found one of our basics. Always yield. All right. Well, we're not. We don't have a basic planes, so we're not going to ever cast that. We probably can just get rid of this too. We have one more looting. I'm going to make a land drop and then pass. <coughs> I trade four for two, but I'm still losing the race there. I assume I didn't have moon. It's the wolf run. Yeah. Like the moon is, the moon helps me there. I don't think I trade here. I don't think I trade four damage for two. Because like 14, four, four. 14, 4, 14, 6, 10, 4. I can get like bolted out of this game or Blood Braid Elf. Yeah, like, I can hit a Blood Braid Elf. I think we're just going to play defense. I think the longer this game goes, the better it is. Because I can just keep drawing Bedlam Revelers. And as soon as I hit a Black Source, I can flash back Lingering Souls, which is nice. All right, Stone Rain. Okay. You got it, dude. All right, flash this back. Um, this doesn't do anything. This doesn't do anything. Still just need a black source. I should keep the Dread Boar because it can kill a Storm Breath Dragon. I think I'm just going to ditch this. And this. And just hold my land again. <clears throat> we should have Black Swords or another Bedlam Revolver. We've got three. We have two Bedlam Revolvers left in our deck. A Pyromancer would also be good. We've got three Pyromancers left. They're probably just sitting on like a million Inferno Titans there. Jeez. So they aren't playing lands or spells, <coughs> which has me kind of nervous. I just don't think, like, if I haven't been attacking this whole game, I shouldn't start attacking. They could have a tireless tracker and they're waiting for a land. They could just have, like, two bolts. Okay. So that probably means we're going to get, I guess they would have Infernal Titan me last turn, so they would just untap these anyway, so that doesn't matter. Ay, ay, ay. God, what a fun magic card. I guess I did have the opportunity to fetch for a swamp, and I said, like, screw it, I was going to cast Bedlam Eveler. So I don't really have anyone to blame myself there. This Courser is going to make things get a little grosser. I just have so many things I have to kill. All right, well, there's step one. Might as well put a stop in our opponent's draw step now. I 
a genre of land. So we can wait on this. Okay, so there's Tireless Tracker. So we'll hold our boat bolt for that. You'll do this turn. Whoa. I think I'm still just going to just have these bounce, even if it means like this Bedlam Arbor is about to get bolted. Because I have to kill this. Do you think this deck's better than Death Shadow? Um, I don't think so. The problem is I can't play Death Shadow at the team tournament because it takes Snapcaster and Dismember. Crack for four, Black Source, Bolt this, Black Source, Lingering Souls, Trade, go to two. They have a land in their hand. They're going to get another draw. All right, we'll take one more draw step. <coughs> if we get that draw step, we're just treading water. Yep, take four. Here's the tracker. Plays land, and that's that's enough. I I yield to this. I would assume that yeah, like this is this is probably. I don't really know if this is a tough matchup, but I I would assume that especially the way that I've thought about building this deck, it probably doesn't this it doesn't get you know much better against them. So I actually don't want that much removal, I don't think. I, mean, I want some, but not a lot. I guess I want more because they show me they have coarser. So I think I definitely want these explosives. Probably can cut this command. <coughs> the push is probably okay. <coughs> but I'm not sure it's better than anything else I've got. I could I'll probably end up cutting some fatal pushes on the draw to Maybe bring in the Dark Blast and the draw to be able to answer a turn one thing. Turn one mana creature. But I think on the draw, or on the play, I think this is where I want to be. Okay, Command gets rid of. Okay, Command gets rid of Tireless Tracker. The clue one thing on the stack. Probably cut one of these. Yeah, let's try this. Yes, makes sense in my head. I'm gonna cut these two brutalities in the draw. I'll probably bring in this push and then maybe this dark blast, just to have enough answers to what's going on there. <clears throat> I appreciate Rev showing up, and hanging out tonight. It's nice to have you all in here. I haven't been took a little bit of a hiatus. God, we need 21 lands. All right, this hand's not bad. We can take out like, Utopia Sprawl, Brutality, something. <coughs> this Faithless Looting gets tougher on the on the Mulligan, so I might end up just discarding it to the Brutality Escalate. There's definitely a cost, and that, that this also makes me want to have one more land in this deck because. I think that, like, Faithless, like, it makes it so you don't mulligan as much. You have lands. And, like, Faithless Looting is a card that does not, in it, like, play well with mulligans. Yeah. Flying Callers, good night, Irene. I don't have, like, a pithing needle or anything for that. Yeah. So now I'm probably going to cast the battle, cast the looting. We are far off of that now, but Trinisphere, you don't say. So I want to get rid of this. Kind of want to get rid of all those cards. Like all those cards are not good for me. I can brutality away the molten rain. Thought sees the Trinisphere. Then just hope they don't hit land drops. I 
I thought about streaming some Ironworks tonight, but that would have just been a shit show of me timing out. <clears throat> I think I want to get that deck. I think I want to get it in paper. I don't even know how expensive it is, but I think I want to at least know what's going on in the deck. Don't. Did you draw Utopia Spell? God damn it. That just like completely muffs everything. So now I like have to loot now. Because they're just going to kill this. And then still probably Thought Seize, like, okay. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. We're going to take the Molten Rain. And then we're going to K Command, shooting the Trinisphere, rebuying the Bedlam Reveler. Molten Rain. I could make them discard. Making them discard better than having Bedlam Reveler. Bedlam Reveler will cost. I can just cast it, so I think I'm going to want the Reveler. Probably just want to wait also because they might have they might not have drawn a land for the blood red elf they might have a one mana spell that is impactful <coughs> you okay so return target creature Destroy target artifact. Thank you for the bits there, Jay Huey. I appreciate that. Man, it sucks to ditch this bolt. I guess I could just now. Yeah. This revler just like, you know, it's the biggest thing on the board. Not having anything to do with this uh, pyromancer yet is kind of annoying, but we can go like fetch. Um, yeah, there's your elf. Fetch into faithless looting. Just kidding. We're not gonna be. Able to, yeah, we are gonna be able to do that unless they have a land. They have Thunderbolt Hellkite in their deck too. <coughs> I feel like I can't beat this deck. That was a mistake. I should have fetched just to like not give them the option to eat a spell. So this is gonna give me sacred foundry. This actually this is probably gonna give me swamp. This will give me sacred foundry. It does suck to have to take a damage for that though, but such is life. That was just a probably a mistake on my part playing the Arid Mesa. This might save me some life from the Thopters too. Like they might end up just P and King this young Pyromancer, or it's gonna slowly, you know, slowly get out of control. Always world. That field of that. <coughs> now I just need a lingering souls. Like draw lingering souls next turn. Oh my gosh. That's just like board where he's just super stabilized. So this is like such a board, like it almost feels like a limited deck in some ways, because it's just like board control deck. What is this? It's like an acid moss. Oh, we just tossed it. Okay. We just like toss one of these and then cycle this relic.
Uh, this trend sphere is a huge. I think I have to take. Tireless tracker is a problem. This trend sphere is a problem. This lightning bolt's a problem. There's legitimately arguments to taking all these cards, I think. Because, like, if I let Trinosphere get in play, the good thing about Trinosphere is that it's not going to, because I'm only casting one spell a turn. If I let Tireless Tracker get into play, then that threatens one of the game. Lightning Bolt deals with my young Pyromancer, which is my way to control the board, but he's already got that dealt with here. So I think I'm going to take Tireless Tracker. And I don't think I'm attacking. You might just cast Blood Elf and just be like, whatever. But I just thought that was like an interesting take there. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I am, Andy. How'd your RBDU go? Yes, they bolt my Pyromancer. That was it. They didn't have any other. They didn't even play the Transphere. Ugh, that's tough. Yep, we're just gonna pass and hold up here. Yeah, there's no sense attacking. We need like one. We need one more. We need something here. I think I could have played better. What did you decide to play ultimately? So let's go get this here. So this means we get the P and K off the board. If he throws here, these trade, these trade, then the board's clear. And he's got a blood right off to follow it up with, but like, at least we're not taking any damage. UB mid, yep. All right, so we do trade. Just a good card, good deck, good deck. <coughs> punished. It's not punished quite. We need one more land in order for that Bedlam Reveler to be able to play. So they can't really Blood Bright Elf, right? Because don't they, doesn't this cost money? Or it costs extra? Or does this still cost? Like three and is good. No. Okay, nice. We have to hit something here. That counts, but I have to take three damage to do it. Right? Yeah, which leaves me dead. So let's just cast it. Let's see what could have been. Then scoop it up. I think I needed more to interact with the board there. Like, I think I needed more, like, less discard, more cards that, like, more X's and O's cards, I think. You know, Moto's dumb, where I can't even draw cards and be salty. <coughs> Doesn't even enable that. So let's go back to this. I think... I'm going to add one more land, maybe one more of these, but I don't play a lot of white spells. So it might just be another Blood Crypt or another Marsh Flats. So I can add one, then move this over here, cut the Dank Blast, and then go like this. Oh, nice, Andy. What decks are you? What uh, were you looking at? Your team is gonna play. I think we're gonna play either like our. We're gonna have one seat that's gonna play either Infected Humans, and then another seat that's gonna play.
blue white, and then I'm either gonna play Ironworks or this. Humans, Hollow One, and who knows? Yeah. It's like <coughs> Noble Hierarch deck, Black Blue Cliff decks, and then like whatever else you want to play. Yeah, we'll keep this. We're gonna discard spell on one, discard spell on two. I wish I had a Godless Shrine. Maybe I'll play the Godless Shrine. So I've got the Liana the Veil in the deck. So maybe it's worth playing the Godless Shrine. I don't know. This is the Scred Dragons deck. You don't say. Lightning Bolt doesn't really do anything. Blood Moon kind of does something. So let's get rid of this Blood Moon. <clears throat> I definitely think I'm going to gear, like, definitely going to slant this deck the more I keep thinking about it like I'm not gonna just play like a straight up 50-50 mid-range deck like I'm gonna beat what I think I'm gonna play against and I'm just gonna lose the other stuff so my opponent <coughs> it's not gonna have a lot going on after all this they might just top deck their way out of it though which we rough I feel like this deck beats decks that don't, like, like, it beats creature decks, and then it beats, like, decks that don't interact with it very well. Like, it's going to be, I guess it's, like, a stupid statement. Um, it's going to be able to handle decks that just don't. It's going to be able to handle decks that don't interact well with, like, Sarkin, or like don't deal with permanents well, I think. Like it's got just enough removal and then can land its threats and go over the top with cards like this. It's probably not even a great matchup for me because it's like Stormbreath Dragon. So four out of five cards, I can just brutality them. They bolt me, I at least get to take a peek. <coughs> and then if I have to Thoughtseize, I can. I guess I'm just going to do this because it just works better in it. Like, if I can get cards out of their hand for when, like, we draw a Redlum Reveler or cards into my graveyard for if I draw a Reveler. Maybe they'll just let it resolve and think of a weird Death Shadow deck. No. All right. So I guess we're like kind of rewarded, but we're at eight, which isn't good. Snow covered mountain. Alright, well that's gonna be our white source at least. Or I can get a maybe I'll just leave it on well. He doesn't have that many Blood Moons left, so I think I'm just going to tap Sacred Foundry. <coughs> Sacred Foundry. So I got two Moons. Famous last words. We don't have to worry about it. We drew it. I'm going to leave these in my hand because I might be able to want to loot some of them away. I'm probably definitely going to loot this mountain away if I draw it. So you guys have humans, humans or humans like slash infect. That's bad. Human slash infect, blue white, and then I'm either gonna play this or ironworks. All right, lucky. I probably should have played a land. I mean, there's nothing they could probably Kolagon's command. Come on. All right, well, that means I can still bolt plus Kolagon's command anything, so there's no need to put anything else out there for lands. I guess I also could just play them to, in case I draw Bedlam Reveler, to have a lot of lands in play. A little bit of monkey business. 
think I'm just gonna command this. Like, I doubt I'm gonna be able to bring anything back with this. And I can get a two for one. Get cards out of their hands. So we get a cavern, which we knew about. Just said I didn't have anything else to do. If we get this thing gets abraded or bolted, I'm gonna feel stupid. Which probably means I should have just lightning bolted this thing. And got too cute. Yeah. I I fucked this all up. <clears throat> this is just poor. It's probably poor as well, but we're gonna at least get something on the board. That could be another spread, I guess. Yeah, Dreadboar is a sorcery. So, what could this be? This is likely just a removal spell. <coughs> so, I might as It's either a removal spell or a Simeon Spirit Guide. So, I might as well just wait until I have something to force through. Problem is, all of his dragons have haste or like lock me out of the game. What an anemic draw. So mopey. Just 15 turn clock. I deserve that. I played this like garbage. <coughs> Just did not play that well enough to win it. I'm kind of I'm pumped for the new uh, new standard cards that are coming in. Some of these spoilers look pretty sweet. We can get rid of Fatal Push, get rid of Lightning Bolts, keep these in. I could bring in Ensnaring Bridge, because I don't think he actually can beat that. A creature with power greater than the number of cards in your hand can attack. How does he beat an Ensnaring Bridge? <coughs> he probably just doesn't. This creature just can't attack me. I'll just make this massive board. Right, they gotta be, the Bolts have to be better than Brutalities. Yeah, whatever. We'll just make a huge board and upgrades up to this. The Rabble Master Blaster. I probably would play it if I wasn't like looking to punt some matchups. Like I literally at this at this GP want to go like O three and play in the PTQ the next day or do really well. They do have a braid. So that's how they do beat it. I guess I can bring in the Chandra. The Chandra's a removal spell on the stick. Probably should have boarded that in. <coughs> uh, this is too slow. I think his hand's so mopey. This doesn't do anything. What time is the PDQ on Sunday? I'm not sure, but yeah, I would much rather like slant it. I think I'm gonna I'm just gonna mulligan. I don't think this hands I think hands too slow. This hands not great. Just like in standard, yeah, I should have had Chandra in my deck for sure. You're you're right there, Joey. I'm just playing fast and loose tonight. Yeah, I think this is what we're going to start out with tomorrow. I will likely stream tomorrow morning, I think. Go with this. Keep this. <coughs> now, I might not 
Thoughtseize on one. I won't Thoughtseize on one if there's a land on top of my deck. Because then I can just go double on two. Um, here we're going to put this on the bottom. Like, is this, this isn't worth not fetch Thoughtseize, not Inquisitioning on anything. I should put it on top to make him think about it. No chains to make that. Yeah. You looked at some of the uh, some of the spoilers, Joey. Like, I was really hoping there was a. I really hope there's gonna be like serum visions with Suve or whatever Suveil. Like, hoping for that real bad. All right, anger of the gods, Eidolon. So we got this covered. We're just gonna take this anger. They do have. Dublay Big Dragon, and they put a card on top. So they probably put land number three on top. <clears throat> There's a dog barking outside. Alright, we're going to take this Thunderbreak Legion. It's not like we have a good way to handle this Stormbreath Dragon either, but it comes down a turn faster. Yeah. Cancel plus Suve is sweet. I wonder if it's greedy to play this before this. I go to nine doing that basically because I take four. Yeah, I'm not blocking, so we're just gonna bolt this. All those, all the su um, all the whatever the survey, all the survey cards literally just say like do something, flip my search faster. Which I don't think that card has to be any better, especially when it's number one nemesis is leaving standard. Because, like, Sir, Sir Veal, is that what it is? I don't even know. There's the Thunder Boy. Dude, we're just so dead six ways to Sunday here. What am I even, like, putting this on? I don't know. Yeah, we're just like eight and eight. And then like we're actually just like locked we're just dead because of the trigger will kill us. Hiya. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. Sir Veal. Sir Veal. Oh, most we can out. All right, let's go back to the details here. I'm going to be back tomorrow morning. I think I'm actually going to play the Godless Shrine. If I want to add another land and I've got these veils, I think I want to play a second white source and play a Godless Shrine. Like, don't play this Marsh Flats. Go get a Godless Shrine. It's just another white source. And it helps cast double black cards. <clears throat> so get that. Then play the Brutality in the board of 21 lands. Got my voids. Got this. I'll look into other sideboard cards, but like I don't I don't know what else is hot on the docket. I'm gonna shut my YouTube video off. 